some of you guys are jumping on and becoming like, like in your first week, you're writing five to eight K. I mean, you're, you're literally becoming a top producer. And when I say top producer, I mean a top 10% earner right from the start. It, it's like, that's the direction you're going right from the start. So the cool thing about our platform is if you have the work ethic, a lot of you guys can do that right from the start. Others, it may take a couple months, but it gives you the ability to get there. And that's what we're seeing. Let's get into it. It's as simple as this. Your, your typical earner, your typical worker here in the United States basically works for someone. I mean, that's, 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 we know that. That's really how it is. You guys are in a position to be top earners because you do work for yourself and you have the flexibility. If you want to put in a 15 hour day, we can make that happen. There are ways to make that happen. Absolutely. Imagine that. Imagine someone who is maybe a little uh, ADHD, a little like me in, in some ways, and you're up more and you, you don't mind putting in the work. You, if you really wanted to put in 15 hours a day on our system, you could do that. So just keep that in mind. I'm, I'm putting that out there because what happens is this. Remember, your average earner here in the United States is going to end up retiring on a fixed income. And when I say fixed income, I'm really not, I didn't really, that's not what I meant. I mean, barely getting by. I mean, living month to month. And in many cases, in most cases, most of the people that retire in the United States do not retire living the type of retirement that they want. Maybe not living in the type of house that they want. The cool thing about our business when you become a top earner and you stick you stick with your you, with what you're doing top earners do retire in comfort i mean that's that's what i look at you know when i retire i don't i don't want to be struggling i don't want to have to survive check to check i want to be comfortable i want to be going to france to paris for the week you know if we want to take a trip to paris we want it we're going to do that and you should too and that's the beauty of a platform like this. So why am I bringing this up? Because you guys got uh, you got some work to do to get there. That's really why. Do you have goals? Have you sat down and said, this is what I, my goal for the next 12 months is? If not, you should do that. This is my five-year goal. This is where I want to be financially over the next five years. If you haven't actually sat down and thought about that and put it on pen and paper, I'm going to say, suggest that you do that. Keep in mind, guys, the average household income is a little over $70,000. And that's with, that's with two earners. Your typical dental hygienist. <laughs> I like to use this as an example. I know some of you guys have been with us for a while. You've seen this a bunch of times, right? Um, so your typical dental hygienist averages a $65,000 salary across the U.S., it, and that's including a 10 hour work day. Okay. Now I, and, and I always add in driving time to me from when you leave the house to when you get back home, that's your work day, you know, selling final expense face to face. We learn to, to, to count it that way. Okay. You know, especially when you're putting in long hours. So picture this, you know, your, your typical dental hygienist 50 hours a week so they can earn $65,000. That's kind of crazy I mean, when you think about it. And, and the worst part is most of the people here in the United States, most individuals would be happy to make $65,000 a year. Well, if you're only making $65,000 on and you're on our platform, well, you, you won't be. You won't last. Simple fact is that's not what our system is designed for. Our system 100 obviously is designed for you to make a lot more than that. Now, with the dental hygiene, genus, keep this in mind. They got to get a, a degree. I mean, you guys don't. Sure, you went to insurance school. You put in a few hours. You spent, maybe you spent a thousand bucks to get your insurance license. But how much money is involved in getting an associate degree? Keep that in mind. Some people actually get into debt for years just to be a dental hygienist. Here's the question you should be asking yourself. If I had to sacrifice a little bit more, at least 50 to 60 hours per week for just a few years for a short period of my life. So I'm not saying even 10 years, but let's say, let's say a few years, let's say at least five years so that you could actually end up being a top 
10% earner. And I'm not talking top 10% in insurance. I'm talking top 10% earner in the United States, period. Would you make the sacrifice? Would you put in the time? Are you putting in the time? Because for some of us, look, when I first got into sales, I was terrible. I was not a natural. It, I was really, really bad when I first, you know, the first real sales gig that I had was selling stamp concrete driveways, pool decks, um, and doing other remodeling stuff, you know, screen enclosures to remodeling kitchens, right? That's what I sold. When I first started doing that, I wasn't making, believe me, I was not making $65,000. And the cool thing about our platform is you don't have to go through all that stuff. You know, I, I it, it, here's the funny thing. When I first got into sales, I lived in Broward County. I had to run appointments on 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 any given day. I might have a lead in South Miami and another lead up in Northwest Palm Beach. So that would literally be hours of driving just to get to my appointments. The beautiful thing about this platform, guys, is it's right here for you. All you got to do is, is make the sacrifice and put in the time and make the dials. Something to consider, guys. Right. We all want to be successful, I think, to a, to a certain degree. And we all view success differently, right? We all do that. I'm talking about financial success here. So let's, let's just narrow it right down. You got to do things different than what your next door neighbor is doing. You got to do things different than what you used to do when you worked for the man, so to speak. Step outside your norm. That may, for you, that may mean having to be a little pushier than you're used to be on the phone. Uh, for some of you, it may mean working a little bit harder, putting in more time. But step outside what you're used to. That's how it's going to happen. Taking chances. Some of you guys never spent money on advertising on leads. Some of you, um, I, I was speaking with an agent a couple of weeks ago. The guy's like, yeah, I spent a lot of money on advertising, about two, $300 a week. I laughed. I basically, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, and, and he was telling me, you know, he makes about 50, 60,000 a year. I got, I asked him, I drew it out of him. And I, and I said to him, and this is the crazy part. This is how people think. How much money do you want to make? He said, at least a hundred, $150,000 a, a, a year. And I said, well, how much money are you willing to spend each week to make that type of a profit? Now that's overall profit, you know, after the cost of leads and advertising. He said, oh, about $300. I'm like, but that's what you're doing now. He actually thought there's going to be some magic thing out there where he can spend 300 bucks a week to make $150,000 a year with insurance. And I had to explain to him that's not how it works. And, and, and he obviously wasn't a fit for what we were doing. So you got to push yourself, guys. And, and this, is, this is where the sacrifice comes in. With our business, you've heard me say it, guys. You put in the sacrifice you give up a few things for a few years of your life. And at some point, one day, you will never have to sacrifice anything ever again. That's our industry. And that's our platform too. Guys, sometimes we got to recommit to our business, especially when you have a rough month, you kind of got to shake it off and recommit. And that is very important. I, I've seen agents that, would get a little burnt out, a little tired. They're taking time off. And the next thing you know, they're taking more time off. And, and instead of recommitting, they're trying to figure out a different, a different way to go. And of course, what generally a lot of times happens is, well, in most cases, the different way doesn't work out. Recommit to your business if you have to. And, and of course, to your family, because that's what this is about for a lot of you guys. You're doing this so that you can support your family, so you can change your lives and their lives. And that's what I like to see. When, uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, when Chris T told me uh, a few months ago that he was taking his kids out of public school and putting them into a private school because he can afford that now, it was exciting to hear. I mean, that's that's kind of huge. For for a lot of us, that's really huge. And, and that's... That's what's happening with some of you guys. You're getting to a point to where now this, this is what scares me. I've seen this happen with, with a couple of agents, a couple of you guys, I might be in this zone. Maybe you need to decide if it's you, you get a little fat, you may make it like a little money more than what you're used to. 
And the next thing you know, you're taking a little time off. If you want to, if you want to keep doing what you've done in the past, that's up to you. You know, what did Einstein say? The, the definition of insanity is, you know, doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different results. Guys, it, it doesn't work that way. This platform, if you put in the time, if you recommit, don't, don't get a little fat in the wallet and then back off a little bit because you don't have to do the work. Push yourself a little bit. Ask yourself, do I want more? Am I okay with what I have? Me? Ah, it's never enough. Ah, that's just me though. It's never enough. I'm never happy. I'm never satisfied. Uh, my wife, she's the same. She reaches her goals. Uh, I remember years ago, we talked about having a big, beautiful new home. We got it. We paid it. It's all paid off. And we don't even have a mortgage anymore. And now she's already talking about another home. I'm like, come on, baby. Baby, we got the home. What are you talking about? It's never enough. That's the sign of a real producer right there. <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at here in a little while. So uh, after we hang up the call, average agents versus the producers. Guys, look, the average insurance agents, you think you're taking orders. You, you kind of treat it like a customer service representative. That's not how this business is. You have to work on yourself. You have to become a closer. A producer enjoys overcoming objections. When the client says, I got to think about it, it's go time, baby. It's, oh, really? Oh, that's good. You got to think about it. Now, let me give you something to think about it. You want to play? Let's go. A producer practices their profession, works to better themselves constantly. So, and that's the other thing. Everybody, whether you're already a top producer or not, should be constantly trying to do something to work on themselves. I know Steve shared a few months back that, you know, that he likes to go into on the weekend, he goes in and listens to a recording of himself to see if he can hear something to change it. Guys, that's what I did when I, when I was doing face-to-face -face sales. Um, I had to do that every now and then. And, you know, and you guys have heard the story where I went a couple of years without list, without recording myself. And one day I went out in the field, I had this crazy like 15 hour day set up, bunch of appointments in like four different cities, a lot of driving. And I went to the first appointment, I recorded myself. And when I came out, I heard myself doing a bunch of things that I didn't like. I changed it on the way to the next appointment. And I conscientiously worked on those things and had one of the best day I had had in about a year. So guys, work on yourself, do what you have to do. Listen to your recordings, use energy, charisma, Use your vocal tonality. Now, some of you guys are new. A uh, good example, Ricky, Dylan, you guys are new with this. You got the book. You, the book talks about it. You have to work on this. When do I get excited? When do I want to just be mellow and talk to the client and bring it down a notch? How do I react when they tell me a funeral story? Am I reacting with empathy? Is my voice tonality sending them the message of, hey, this person is empathetic. This person can relate. Are you using your tonality throughout your presentation? If not, work on it. If you are, work harder on it. If you're working on it, keep working on it. It's, some, it's a constant it's a constant. This is what the professional closer does. They work on themselves and they don't give up when the client gives an objection. Exactly like what Dylan and Ricky did in their first week. I love what you guys did, man. Um, the fact that you guys spent all that time fighting with these people that helps you get through the learning curve that puts you in such a better position this week than you were last week. You have no idea. Well, you will, you will. Like I said, implement those changes, and I suspect you're gonna, you're both gonna have pretty good weeks this week. Constantly work on yourself through studying the art of persuasion and influence. I mean, think about it, guys. This is what we do. What, what was it? We were at a, we were at a magic show, right? And and I'm watching this guy, and what he's doing the entire time is his his illusion. All, he's a, a you know a magician, basically an illusionist, right? All he did was everything possible to persuade me into believing what he was doing and influence my thinking on what he was doing. 
That's what he's done his whole life. And he shared, it's funny, part of his his uh his you know his performance was he shared his story when he was a child now he how he got into magic and everything so um i'm using that as an example because you guys are magicians you guys are doing stuff that most people don't even realize they can do work on yourself and get better please please do this for your family just do what you have to do to reach your goals okay so Let's talk about new agents on the platform. Guys, understand that at some point, you probably will need to be spending around $1,500 to $2,000 based on, depending on your goal. So let's go back to the guy who, who's used to making $60,000 a year that I talked to a couple of weeks ago, but he's only going to spend $300. Well, no kidding, dude. You spend $300 a week on, on your leads, your advertising. That's nothing. That is not, that's just not enough. If you invest into your business like a professional, well, then you may actually become a successful professional. So here are some goals. You really want to get to the point where you've got at least 20 to 30 appointments daily for, you You know, and for some of you guys, it may take a couple thousand dollars to do that. Um, we've got agents experimenting with more than that right now. Uh, I know that one of one of the agents wants to is is planning. He's on vacation right now, and he he plans on coming back and and spending around. He wants to see what he can do with the twenty five hundred dollar budget uh, consistently. He he's going to really push for the max. He, he wants to step his game up big time. I, I love stuff like that. But really, as a new agent, twenty to thirty appointments daily. And which is going to equal 20 to 30 leads of people that didn't set the appointment. Now you got so many people to call, to speak with, that it's it's almost impossible to fail. It, it, it really is. Now, if you're new, your target, you really want to target. The minimum, I would say, is like there's no reason for a brand new agent to be making less than 50 dials a day. Um, and yet we see that. So here, here's what I'll say. If you don't know how to figure out how many dials a day you're making, reach out to me. I'll tell you how to do it. No problem. Um, but I, I see this. And the funny thing is, you know, the, the agents that aren't making at least the bare minimum of, of 50 are the ones that are the, having all the trouble. It's always that way. They're, they're the ones that have the excuses. They have the issues. They have the, it just, it just, it just doesn't work with our system. Um, you got to put in the effort. I mean, honestly, I, I want you to think about this, guys. If I were to make 100 dials in a day of people that did not answer the phone, that's not even two hours of work. I'm not even on the phone for two hours. Really, 100 dials, I think I could do it in about an hour and a half. So if you're not willing to put in at least 50 dials, how vested into your business are you really? I mean, you're, I, you're sending the message to me. I'm seeing everybody's dials. And look, guys, I've also seen, let me put this out there. I've also seen some really good agents that have been with us for a while go up and down. I've seen you guys have weeks to where it seems like more people answer the phone. So you're not making 75. And then other weeks, I've, I've also noticed that it seems like, you know, we get a little tired. And the next thing you know, you're not even making that 50 dials. Hey, we all go through this. You have to push yourself. Honestly, if you are, if you want to earn six figures, you need to impress, leave the impression on yourself. I have to make at least 75 dials a day. And if you're on the phone for, let's say, a good long day, eight to 10 hours, and you're able to do it without making 75 plus dials a day, God bless you. But I'm going to tell you this just because you have a couple of weeks where it feels where you know you don't have to do that doesn't mean there's not going to be a point where you you don't have to where you will have to I'm sorry um, to me the one thing I've I've noticed about the top agents the ones that are always that always oh, consistently the the top two three agents is they're making they're usually averaging around seventy five dials a day and they have those days where nobody seems to pick up the phone and they're making over a hundred dials so count your dials. Ask yourself, am I really doing what it takes to be successful? If not, 
and you need to, and you're having a hard time figuring out a way to change that, reach out to me. I will, I will do what I can to motivate you. Absolutely. I'll make some suggestions. The goals, guys. You want to make eight presentations daily. Now, that to me, this is where the 75 to 100 dials, you may need to make 75 to over 100 dials to make eight plus presentations per day. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. One day, you may actually make 12 presentations. And then another day, you can make 100 dials and only get in four presentations. 12 presentations one day plus four presentations the next day. That's a total of 16 presentations in two days. So there's your average. And that's what I'm talking about, average. You want to average at that eight plus presentations daily if you want to be a top earner, period. That's it. If you're satisfied making under $100,000, don't do any of this. And that's where you'll be. And of course, that's the goal. You're making the dials, you're making the presentations, and now you're making multiple sales daily. Boom. And, and that's what's going on. That's what a lot of you guys are doing. I'd like to say this, and I'm proud to say this, a majority of the agents that are on the platform full-time, in other words, they're basically on every single week, are actually able to do this. So I love it. Have goals. Make your goals. Some of you guys may be looking at these numbers saying, uh-uh, I'm beat one to three sales a day. No, no, no. Three to five sales a day. That's my goal. I love it. We know it's not going to come easily, right? <laughs> Everybody wants the success to be handed it to them. I do. Give me that success. Uh, but it's not going to happen unless unless I put in the work. So I want you to think about it. Well, okay, so here I am. I want the success. I'm having a hard time focusing. There's something distracting. Something's going on. You may need to make changes. And here's one of the things I will say. This is one of the suggestions. If you're really having a hard time making the dials, break up your dials into four sessions. I am not leaving my office to drink my cup of tea or to take a cigarette break or to just shake it off and take a walk, whatever I have to do. I'm not going to do it unless I make at least 25 dials. So you break it into four dialing sessions. But I'm, but I'm, hey, you know, think about it. Four dialing sessions. You go take a coffee break, you take your cigarette break, you go take your lunch break, and then you go take your dinner break later, and maybe not in that order. You figure it out your way. Break it into four sessions. Count your dials. Did I make 25 dials? Did I make a couple of presentations per session? That's it. I mean, think about it. If you break it into four sessions and you make two presentations, let's say two to three presentations sessions you're putting in the time you're making this work remember your why why am i doing this use images just like it says in what's the book called the secret um i read the book and then i think the a movie came out and i think years ago uh i think i saw the movie too uh but stuff like that just do stuff to motivate yourself images can really help. Uh, I'm surprised my wife doesn't have a, a picture in, in, in her office of a $10 million home or something crazy like that. You got to remember your why, you know, you've got to have the pictures. And I know a bunch of you guys do. I know a bunch of you guys are looking at your family going, yep, there's my family. Photo. That's my why right there. This is why I have to do this. Now, this is hard for some of us guys. I know some of you guys got children in the house you got to let them know, hey, when when mommy's in the office working or if when daddy's in the office and that door is closed, you cannot disturb him. He is out of the office. And, and if he gets distracted, he's going to have to go and work outside. You got to let him know, please, this is work time. Um, and I, I know that's tough when you have little kids. I'm not personally, but I, I understand. I understand. I get it. But you got to figure out a way, to, a way to be able to stay focused and not distracted. Um, look, I bring up this taking care of yourself, being eating healthy, sleep, exercise. Hey, for most of us, if you're like me, it's up and down, right? It's always up and down. 
And that's how it is for me. I fight the battle of exercise. I go into these things where I'm three months in and then two, three months out all the time. The better you take care of yourself, the easier it is to stay focused. It really is that tr simple. It really, really is. The more time and effort you put into yourself, into working on yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, the better you off you are the easier your success is going to come. Listen to your presentations, guys. Am I hearing what I want to hear? Do I sound the way I want to sound? Change it. Everybody needs to be listening to a presentation or so, just like what Steve suggested months ago. Do it. It works. It helps. And I'm not picking on anybody. I, this slide, guys, I, just so you know, I had this slide set. This We've used this slide before. One of the common things for new agents to do is they start off in there. They say, um, or uh, a lot. So put that sticky note on your, uh, if, you, if you know you're saying it, it shouldn't even be in your vocabulary. There is no reason for the word um or uh to be in your vocabulary because it sends a really negative message to your prospects. It tells them you're not sure of yourself. That's what it does. And I know, well, you're thinking, well, Doug, I just started this three weeks ago. I'm not sure of myself. <laughs> okay, figure out a way to remove it. Put that sticky note on your desk, uh, on, your, on your screen that says, stop saying um. And then trust me, you're going to sit there and talk to a client. And you're going to go, um, and you're going to look at that note and go, Damn it, I keep saying it. And you're going to stop doing it. Eventually, you will stop catch yourself. It's all part of working on ourselves. This is important. Those of you who haven't started yet or who have recently started, you really need to be doing the, the pricing part, the close exactly as it is in the script. Now, I have a close and I shared it with, um, I know I shared it with Dylan and Ricky this week. I have the close that I used to use back, which is a little bit different than the one that we give you guys now. It's a little tighter. It's more scripted. It's more direct. Um, and if I were to sell today, I would probably use it again. I've got a different close for you. If anybody would like, I'll send it to you. Just shoot me a text. Um, shoot me an email. Hey, Doug, you got that different close? Uh, yes. Try it. It's it's not going to hurt, but it's tighter. It's 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 the one where you're 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 telling them, grab a pen and paper, I want you to write this down. Here's option number one. Did you get that? Okay, great. Here's option number two. Did you write that down too? Here's option number three. Great. Okay, of the three, which would you like your daughter, Jen, to get? And it, the way I word it, it's a little bit different than what we have, what you guys have. Um, so if you want that, I will be happy to send it to you. It's a little different clothes. It's a little tighter. Uh, it's more comfortable for me. I know... After working with our first few agents on this platform, we made a few changes to make it easier for you guys and more relatable for some of you guys. But like I said, I've got a different close. At the end of the day, why am I bringing that up? Because it's not, it's not a bad idea to try something different. You know, if you get in a slump, try something different. It's hard to get out of the slump. It could be a three-day slump. It feels like it's going on forever. Change it up. Try something different. Reach out to me, Doug. I'm in a slump. What can I do, dude? I'll I'll, I'll give you some. I'll, here, try this. Uh, but switch, changing the clothes, changing, making certain changes. Even if you've been doing this for a while, if you reach out to me and say, "Hey, Doug, you know, you know, my numbers aren't the way I, I want them to be. Would you mind listening to one of my recordings? I would be more than happy to, guys. If you've got a recording of a client." that you know you're like, man, this was a weird call. Will you tell me what happened in the end? Give me the name of that client and the day you spoke with that person. I will be more than happy. I will be more than happy to, to check it out for you. That's it, guys. You got to do the work. Remember the iceberg, right? The Titanic. The Titanic only saw that little, it looked like a little piece of ice. Well, guess what? You want success? You got it. There's a lot more than what you may, what you actually see success from successful people. And it, it's going to take, it's going to take a little bit more, a little more time, a little bit effort. Uh, anybody needs anything, please reach out to me. I know Brandon's got a busy week this week. He's, he's usually pretty slammed. Um, 
last week it was crazy for him. Uh, we keep them. We like to keep everybody busy, <laughs> including Brandon. So reach out to me. My, I want to be the one guy. I, I one day, if those of you have been with multiple uplines, I want you to be able to say, yeah, yeah. I've never had a guy like this who is there for me like like Doug is. So reach out to me. Ask me for help. I. This is what I want to do. I get excited when you text me. Oh, I just made a sale. $720. It, I love that stuff, guys. I want to participate. Send me your numbers while you're making them. Those of you, I know some of you do it. Some of you don't. Okay, that's fine. You're independent agents. Do what you want. But please, I love it. I love it when you send me a text. Hey, I just got one. It's American Amicable, $63 a month. Man, I, I want to celebrate with you guys. I'm, I'm going to be also there for you when, <laughs> when, when you have that bad day. When you have that bad week, you have that bad month, it happens. Believe it or not, it does. Guys, have a killer week. Please reach out to me if you need anything. Happy hunting.